right, and hopefully you just watched our last video. This one will lead in quite nicely from there. Now, just a quick review, and I'm, I know a lot of you are probably familiar with this, so this will be some review. I want to go over our quadrants, now our quadrants of the xy plane. Now, remember here in the top right, we usually denote this as quadrant 1. Now, the thing that I want to note about these quadrants is in quadrant 1, notice that any point on the unit circle or any point in this quadrant at all is going to be above the x-axis and to the right of the y-axis. So that means it's going to have a positive x value and a positive y value. Okay. Now to the top left here we call this quadrant 2 and I'm to the left of the y-axis and above the x-axis. So that means I'm going to have a negative x value because I'm to the left of the y-axis but a positive y value still, right, because I'm above that x-axis. Now down to the bottom left, this is my quadrant 3. Now in quadrant 3, I'm still to the left of the y-axis, so that means I have a negative x value for any of these points down here. And I'm below the x-axis, so now I have a negative y value as well. And then here to the bottom right, finally we have quadrant 4. Now quadrant 4, I'm to the right of the y-axis, so my x values will be positive here and I'm below the x-axis, so my y-values are going to be negative. Now, how does this come in useful? Or, <clears throat> how can we make use of this? Let's say that I have a point P, and I know that P is on the unit circle. Right? I'm given that information, it says P is on the unit circle, and I have an x-value of 1 half, but I don't know my y-value. And let's say I have another piece of information well, first of all, let me just be clear here for those of you who can't hear very well. P one half Y is on the unit circle. The unit C. Boom. Now let's say I also know that P is in quadrant one. And I want to find Y. Now this first piece of information, I know that P has an X value of 1 half, and I know that P is on the unit circle. So that means that P is going to satisfy my equation for the unit circle. So I can plug in this 1 half for my X value. That's going to be 1 half squared. Now I don't know what Y is, so I'm just going to leave it as Y for now. And because it's on the unit circle, I already know that this equals 1. I don't need to solve it out from the left because I'm given already that it's on the unit circle. So now I want to solve out for y, and we're going to need to use the second piece of information here in a second. So I'm going to leave that y squared on the left. So that's going to be 1 minus 1 half squared. Now 1 half squared, remember I'm squaring the top and the bottom, so this is 1 fourth. So subtracting this to the other side gives me 1 minus 1 fourth. So then I have y squared equals 3 fourths. Now I want to find y, so I need to take the square root of both sides, but we need to be careful here. right? Remember, y squared, it could be positive or negative, and it's still going to give me a positive value, no matter if y is positive or negative. So when I take that square root of both sides, remember, we need to add that plus or minus before whatever we put over here. Okay? So that's going to be plus or minus. Now the square root of 3 on the top and then my denominator 4, the square root of that is 2. So I have plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Now this is where I need that additional piece of information, right? I have this plus or minus, and I need to know what it is. Now this part right here, p is in quadrant 1, that gives me the information that I need, right? Because I know that y is positive in quadrant 1. So that's going to give me that y is positive, square root of 3 over 2, right? So my final answer would be p is 1 half positive square root of 3 over 2. Or, you know, depending on what it's asking for, uh, my final answer might just be y is positive square root of 3 over 2. Now, you might be asking, well, what about this negative square root of 3 over 2? Why is that even an option? What does that mean? Well, if I didn't have this restriction, p is in quadrant 1, there is another point on the unit circle that has the quadrants, and I'll, I'll, I'll denote that point as Q. I have this Q one half 
minus square root of 3 over 2. Now because of this algebra that we did over here on the right, I know that this point is also in the unit circle, right? This satisfies my equation, but it's not going to be in quadrant 1, is it? I have a positive x value, a negative y value, so that means it's going to be in quadrant 4, right? Somewhere around here. Whereas my p value is in quadrant 1, somewhere around here. Okay, that finishes up our review of the quadrants. Uh, in our next video, we're going to be talking about some more of the properties of the unit circle, getting into it a little bit more depth.